All right, so what we're talking about today is using the midpoint and distance. Before we get into the actual midpoint and distance formula, the first thing we have to learn about is segment bisectors. All right, so to bisect something, if you think about the word dissect, it's kind of like that, but to bisect something, you cut it in half. And so this piece is five, so this piece is also five, so these are equal. When you have things that are equal, you put tick marks on it. So since I'm already using the one tick mark, if I do have another segment bisector, I have to use two tick marks. If I have another one, then I'd have to use three tick marks because one tick mark is equal to one tick mark and two is equal to two and so forth. All right, distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And remember, the first thing you always do is if you have a point 5, 3, you label that x1, y1. And then if the second point is 2, 4, you label it x2 and y2. So it's critical to remember that it's x1, y1, x2, y2, and then you plug it into your equation. Midpoint, you do the same process here with labeling points, but your formula is different, and your formula is going to be x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. One thing I'd like you to notice, though, is that both of these equations, the x's are together, y's are together, x's are together, y's are together. All right, so let's look at the first problem. Whenever you see the word bisect, it is helpful to uh, highlight it. Now it says that AB bisects CD. So the thing that's getting bisect is CD. So that is what I'm going to draw. So I'm going to draw CD. Where's my mouse? Oops, there it's up there. Ah, can't find it. There we go. So I'm going to draw CD, and it's bisected, so it's cut in half. So that means these are equal at E. Now, this AB you can draw, but a lot of times what happens, it just gets in the way, so I don't even draw it. All I really care about is this information here. Now the question is asking to find CE. So I don't know what this is. So C to E, since I don't know what it is, I put an X. I know that this whole thing, C to D is 12. And then you notice it says A to E is 5. I don't have an A or an e. I have an E, but no A on this. So I don't really need it. So that's just the information that they give you, but you don't really need. Well, you can look at this two ways. The first way you could do is you could say, well, these two are equal, so I'm going to put another x here. And I remember segment addition postulate is that one small piece plus another small piece equals the whole thing. So I can write an equation x plus x equals 12. That gives me 2x is 12, and I divide by 2, so x is 6. What you also could do... Let me get rid of this real quick. Maybe. What you could also do is you could also recognize that right here, CD is half of the whole thing. So if CD is half of it, then it's just 6, which is what I did through the equation. All right, let's look at number two. For number two, this one says AE is bisected by uh, BC. So this one is worded differently. It's AC that's being bisected, or AE. So I'm going to draw AE. And this time it's happening at F, so I'm going to put F in the center. And remember, bisect means it's cut in half. And so I put my tick marks on both sides because those are equal. Now I'm going to put my numbers in my picture. The first one says BC is 14. I don't have a BC here, so I don't really care about that one. 
but it does say Fe is 7. Well, if Fe is 7, what's the whole thing? Well, if Fe is 7, that means Af is 7. So that means the whole thing is 7 plus 7, so it's 14. All right, let's go to the next one. For the next two, I'd like you to try and just draw the picture. Once you draw the picture and have everything down, then we can go from there. All right, so what you should recognize, it says that DE bisects AB. So AB is the thing getting bisected. And so I'm going to draw AB. And it's being bisected at C, so it's cut in half here. So now I'm going to put my picture, my numbers on my picture. It says that A to C is 2x minus or plus 6, and C to B is 18. Well, usually we say one small piece plus the other small piece equals the whole thing. But if you guys notice, I have two segments. I got the segment on the left, and I got the segment on the right. And you know that those segments are equal. So since you know those segments are equal, I'm going to go ahead and set them equal to each other. And then I'm going to subtract 6 on both sides to get 12. Divide by 2, so x is 6. Now I'm going to go back and make sure that's what the problem wants. And yep, that's what it wants. I wanted you to solve for x, so we're done. All right, so for number four, you should have highlighted that the DE is bisected. That's what's important. So the segment you should have drawn was DE. So here's DE. It's bisected at C. So tick marks because they're equal. So now I'm going to put some numbers on my picture. D to E is this whole thing is 12. And D to C is X minus 5. Well, remember the rule, one small piece plus the other small piece is the whole thing. The issue is, I don't know this small piece. You cannot set x minus 5 equal to 12 because it's not the whole thing. What you should recognize, though, is that these two pieces are equal. So if the left is x minus 5, the right is x minus 5. Put a big plus sign in between, and now we have an equation. x plus 5 plus x plus 5 equals 12. Combine my x's, and I get 2x. Combine my 5's, and I get 10, and it equals 12. Minus 10 on both sides, and I get 2x is 2. Divide, and x is 1. Now, before I think I'm done, I have to go back and read what it says. I am lucky because it says solve for x. Now, another thing you could have done, let me insert some space so you could see another way to do this. What you could have done is that you could have just recognized right away that x plus x minus 5, uh-oh, did you guys see that? I just caught my mistake. It wasn't plus 5, it was minus 5. Oops, sorry about that. So this is a minus 10. So we're going to add 10, which is 22, which gives us 11. Okay, fix that mistake. But here, if you see this, if the whole thing is 12, then half of it is 6. So you could also do it this way. Sorry about that mistake. Sometimes that happens. You lose a number or write the wrong negative. All right, so for bisecting, it's important to recognize what is being bisected and draw that picture. All right, distance and midpoint formula. So the first thing, again, you do is you're going to write x1, y1, x2, y2. And I'm going to see if I can go up here and copy this. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to do the distance formula first. Um, I brought the formula down here so we could do this. And so I'm going to do my square root. I already labeled x1, y1. So my x2 is 4 minus my x1, which is negative 3. And then my y2 is negative 1 minus my y1, which is 2. 
So now when I do this, I kind of concentrate what's inside first, this part, with the square and over here. And so 4 minus 3 is 7, and 7 squared is 49. Here, a negative 1 and a negative 3, 2 is a negative 3, but negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So now my answer is the square root of 58, and you could go ahead and leave it like that. All right, let's do the distance formula over here on the right, too. Now, this is different because it has x1, y1, and a third one, which is z1, and then x2, y2, z2. So same thing, I'm going to do my x2 minus my x1 squared plus my y2 minus my y1 squared. And now I have another one. I have to do my z's. Now the formula doesn't say z's, but it does the same pattern, 4 minus 1 squared. Now again, I take care of what's inside. A negative 2 and a negative 4 is a negative 6. Right here, this is going to become positive, so it's negative 1 squared, and 4 minus 1 is 3 squared. So I end up getting 36, 1, and 9. One thing that's important to remember is it doesn't matter what it is. When you square it, it becomes positive. So 36 plus 1 plus 9 is the square root of 47. I know 47, 46. I had a bad math day. So the square root of 46. All right, now let's look to midpoint. We'll do a different color. So the midpoint, you already have the things labeled. What's different with midpoint is it's fractions. And you're adding. So x1 is 4 plus x2 is negative 3. And I got those mixed up. I was doing the distance formula. So x1 is negative 3 plus, ooh, plus x2, which is 4, divided by 2. And then the next one is y1, 2, plus negative 1 over 2. Now what's important is that you have to do the numerator first. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1 over 2. And then the other one is also 1 over 2. And that's the answer. All right, let's get some space for the distance for the midpoint formula over here. Just like on the other side, it's the same idea. I'm going to do x's. So 4 plus negative 2 over 2. Negative 2 plus negative 3 over 2. Now 1 plus 4 over 2. So I take care of my numerators. 4, times, 4 plus negative 2 is a 2 over 2. Negative 5 over 2. And 5 over 2. I'm okay with fractions, but I do want you to reduce. 2 over 2 is 1. So you can leave them like this, or you can make them mixed numbers, or you can turn them into decimals. But that's the midpoint. So when you're doing midpoint and distance, it's going to be important that you remember to, that you uh, take the time to label x1, y1, x2, y2, and if there's a z, you do the same process as you do with the others.